Hey guys, Ivan here at ivanmana.com and in this video I want to show you a complete Unbalanced tutorial in 2022. Unbalanced is an amazing landing page builder. I switched to them from ClickFunnels a few years back. Those of you that know my channel know that I have been making videos about Unbalanced for the past few years and this is in my opinion the best landing page builder on the market right now. I tried over 10 different landing page builders and whether you are an affiliate marketer, a business owner, an agency, this landing page will be perfect for you. It has everything you need to grow your business. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create landing pages with Unbounds, how to create pop-ups and sticky bars, how to set up your own custom domain, so on and so forth, so that by the end of the video, you should be very, very familiar with Unbounds and how they work. So you're just gonna follow along with me, watch behind my shoulder, and we're gonna get straight into it. Before we do, guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when I release more videos like this showing you how to grow your business. So we're gonna get straight into it. The first thing I wanna say is that if you don't have Unbounce, if you guys go to go.evonmana.com slash Unbounce, I give you guys a 14-day free trial and a 20% off on the first three months or a year with Unbounce. So it's an offer you can't get just by going to Unbounce.com. So if you do wanna follow along with me and try this out for yourself, definitely take advantage of this offer. You won't regret it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sign up to my own account and then I'm going to see you on the other side. I'll see you soon. All right, welcome, welcome. So the first page you might see is going to be this pages tab. When you first log into Unbounce, you probably won't see any pages. I have this one test page that we created before and we are going to go in and just, I'm going to show you how to create a landing page and all the different tools that Unbounce has, all the cool, tools and settings and basically just how to use it. After that, we're going to head over into pop-ups and sticky bars, integrations and domains. And everything should be pretty straightforward after that. If you go into settings, you'll see all the other options. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, I do suggest that you watch the entire video so that you don't miss any key parts that I mentioned. However, I will include a table of contents on this video so that you just know where you're at. And if you want to navigate to any specific topic, you certainly can. So first things first, landing page. So under pages here, we're gonna click on create new and we're just gonna build out a page together. So you could, oh, and it's asking for this. So if you have created a brand new account, you might not see the smart builder yet. So we're just gonna go with classic and you might not even see that option, but just in case you do just select the classic builder for now, the other one they're still working on. So we can go in and we can select a template, okay? So we're gonna start with the landing pages here. So you can either start with a completely blank page or you can select one of these templates over here. Now I do have a video where I show you specifically how to create a page completely from scratch. So I will include that video in the description. Take a look at that. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, just so I can show you the main tools of Unbalance and how to use it, we will select a template. So let's suppose we want to promote my website, ivanmana.com, and I have a free online marketing guide. So I think this template could look pretty good for that. So it's got a little online marketing suit already in the background, but obviously you can play around. There are a bunch of templates you can work with. And you can just take a look and see what they look like. And then you can you know scroll down, stuff like that. We are gonna go with uh, this one, like I said. And then we're gonna name it, let's name it, Ivan Mana, let's say Unbounce Tutorial 2022, in case I already have that other name. And then we're gonna click on start with this template. And now what we can do is we can just go in and fill in the blanks. So I'm gonna get you acquainted with all the different options here that they have. So on the left hand side here, you're gonna have the elements. So this is where you'll be able to drag and drop uh, different parts that you need. So if you need a text box, for example, you're just going to hover over this text icon here and just drag it over here. And right now the default isn't black, but you can go in and you can make it white, right? So it's more obvious. So uh, on the left side are the elements, on the right hand side is how you edit the elements. So here you drag the text box from the left. Now, if we wanna increase the size, we can go in and do that. We can select 48. Right, And the one thing I love about Unbounce is actually their customization options. So they have a lot more options than your average landing page builder does, including ClickFunnels. 
So over here, you can see it's kind of squished together. That does not look good. So we're going to increase the line spacing. And if you want a bigger size text than what they have here, you're not limited to only these options. You can, for example, type in 100 and it's going to give you that size, right? So you're not limited to only what's there. So that's cool too. Uh, 100 is a bit big though. So actually we will probably drop it. Maybe let's say 72 is okay. We can drag it, right? So it's just the simple drag and drop. Uh, if you don't like a certain element, you can click on it and then either, either click delete over here or just click the backspace button. That does the same thing. So we're gonna come here. We will increase the line spacing again, maybe to 58, maybe 77, that looks good. And then here's where you can adjust the style, you can adjust the text color, you can adjust the font, you can adjust the alignment, all right? So lots, lots, lots of options here. Whatever you want, you have the background properties, which you probably won't need depending on what you're doing exactly. But I love that you can change the opacity, right? So if you make this, for example, like let's suppose you have an image in the background that makes this hard to read, you can just simply use this background text box to adjust it, right? But we're not gonna do that. Uh, this is easy enough to read. And let's suppose we wanna say that, and I don't like Montserrat. So you can select from their options here, or if you click on add, remove font, you can type in the font that you like. Um, I don't know of a font that I like actually, so I'm just gonna go through and see which one I think will look good. Let's say, I think this one looks pretty good. Nato San, so I'm just gonna click on the little plus sign. Uh, Hebo looks good too, we can try that. I'll click on plus sign and then I'm gonna click on done. And then I'm gonna click on this little drop down so that I can see more. And then if I click on Hebo, I can choose from again, all these different options, right? So they have a lot more customization than like I said, your average builder. So if I, so I'm gonna select all the text, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna again, drop that. And I can delete Montserrat if I want so that it doesn't show up anymore which is fine because then we can just re-add it, right? So if you click on add text again, you can type in Montserrat and you can just re-add it if you want. So you can do that, but let's suppose we want Hebo. I'm gonna say Hebo regular. And now this is, well, it didn't go through. Let's try it again. Might have to just uh, double click everything here and make sure you select the text that you wanna change. And then we can go to Hebo regular. And now this is Hebo regular, right? That looks okay. Let's try the other, the other font that we added, which was Nato Sans, let's say regular. Yeah, I mean, that looks cool. You know, that, that looks fine. So uh, it's a little too small. Okay, let's make it 60. I have to do it again. There you go. Okay, so now we can actually select it and then let's type in get your free, oops, free 55 page affiliate marketing guide, because that is what I am promoting on my site, which is actually being redesigned right now. So get ready to see a cooler site at evonmana.com. And then this is the subtext. We can change this up. Let's say, learn what is affiliate marketing and how to get started with it right now. And again, like I said, the one thing I love about Unbounce, especially compared to other builders, is how you can drag any element anywhere you want. So if you're familiar with ClickFunnels, for example, you know that they constrain you within certain blocks, right? Like it would be a block up here, and that's it, you can't move it unless you insert another row, and then you would have to either put it here, here, or here, like you have blocks. But with Unbounce, you just have so much freedom, and it's not like stuff is going to be uneven because you can see the line, right? You can see the green line, which t tells you that it's centered. So that, I'm, I'm really happy with that. And then we, I don't like this aerial again, so I'm going to select the same text that we did. I'm gonna do that and then maybe increase the size to 24 is okay. Increase the spacing to 34. Maybe I adjust this, right, make it a little bit longer and it's also what you see is what you get right so you guys don't have to meddle in the code and then see what it looks like and then go fix the code and then come back and see what it looks like whatever changes you're making those are live those are live changes exactly what the page is going to look like right so we're obviously going to preview the page once we're done but this is what we're going to see so i love that part now let's suppose this picture is actually a little a little brighter and it's hard to see right so what we can do is we can just click on this picture. So I'm just clicking on the background. You can see it is selected because of the little 
black and blue lines there on the sides. And then if you scroll down to where it says advanced settings, you have the opacity over here and you can change the opacity by making it, you know, this will completely cover it with this gray color, or you can just reduce it a little bit, right? And now this white is easier to see. Now, on the other hand, you can do the opposite. You can make this color white, right? You can make it have white, and then you can change this to the text color to black. Let's say you do that, right? So you can do this too. So lots of options you have. I love how, again, something other landing page builders don't have is they have the option to, uh, they give you the option for you to change the opacity of the images. And I love that. Uh, I do think, however, this looks better. The one we had before. So I'm going to change it back to white. Change this to white. And uh, this looks a little too dark. So maybe we do want to go back and make it a little grayish as it was before. It was actually grayish. It wasn't black like that. And I think that's easy enough to read, right? So that's, that's perfect. We got what we have. You can also undo. So if you make a mistake, you can click on undo. You can move an entire section up or down. So let's suppose I want to move this section up there. I can either click on it and so I can either select this option here and just drag it up. And now it's going to be up top. Or if I want to move it down, can move it down like that. Or you can just click on it and say, move up, move down. This is a little bit easier depending on the size of your block, right? You can also copy an element and then select this and paste it. And I'm going to delete that. Or you can just right away just duplicate it and it's just going to duplicate it, okay? So super easy stuff, pretty simple to use. Uh, let's look at some of these other elements here on the left-hand side. So the very first one here is a section. So a section is basically what holds all your elements together. So if you drag a section, you can choose where you want to drag it. See how it's gray over here? So if I want to drag it here, it's gray. It's going to be at the top. If I drag it here, it's going to be in between these two. If I drag it here, it's going to be just below this whole section. So let's suppose I want to drag a section, let's say here. That's a section, right? So this is what will hold all of our elements, okay? So then you have a box. So a box is like a smaller container. So let's suppose, let's suppose that I am creating a page which will explain a product. And the product has different, you know, like different boxes of explanation. I don't know if you're familiar with what I mean, like when a product has, you know, box one, box two, box three for explaining the product, like feature one, feature two, feature three. And let's suppose you don't want to keep on copying and pasting every single element, right? What you can do instead is you can take a box, for example, let's suppose I make this box like this, and then you can drag all these elements into the box. Okay, so let's suppose I'm going to drag this here. And this is a, a bit more of an advanced technique, so don't worry too much about it, but I'm just showing you kind of everything that Unbounce has and the, the comfort, right, that you can have once you actually start building out landing pages. And obviously this is white, so we want to remove opacity. We don't want it to be seen. We want it to be like an invisible box. Uh, we can also remove the border, but I'm going to keep it there for now just so we see where we're at, right? So this is the box. Let's move it to the side a little bit first, and then we're going to drag this element, and we're going to drag it inside the box. And the way you know that it's inside the box is because you see the little, the little checkered box inside it, right? So we're going to drag it in there, and then we're going to take this button. Okay, let's drag it a bit more. We're going to take this button, and we're going to drag it here as well. And then let's make sure everything is centered. Then we're going to come back, and we're going to center this here and make sure this is centered. If you want to center it without having to move your mouse, what you could also do is just click on this option here and it's going to center it within the container that it's at. So now that we added this element to this little box, if we click on center, it's going to center this container. If we click on the box, for example, and we click center, it's going to center the box in this whole section, right? And so if I select this box again and we remove the border, we say none. Now it's an invisible box, but look at how much easier it is for me to move everything, right? I can now move this whole thing over. So I don't have to move each piece individually. Like I said, if I'm making, uh, you know, different boxes, you know, feature one, feature two, feature three, it's just so much easier to have it all in a box. And then you can copy and paste the whole box. Okay. So again, something maybe a little bit more complicated, but is just so much easier to use. And um, for this button, actually, once we get into the elements, I'll, we'll change the button. 
uh, but let's go from top to bottom. So for the text, you are already familiar with that. For the image, we haven't done that. So let's drag an image here. Uh, so on bounce, so you can upload your images. You have unsplash images and you have unbounce public images, which you can use, which are just basic like icons and stuff like that, right? Unsplash is basically just an integration. So you don't have to go into actually unsplash.com and find images. You can just find them here and you can search for whatever it is you want here. So let's say money for our case, it's make money online. Boom, right? You have different options here. And this looks like a cool image, I like the different colors. So you can just click on it once or you can double click it or, and then click choose whatever way you want to go. And then it's going to upload here and you can say scale image to scale to fit page. So this is the full size image, but obviously that's too big. As you can see, it's red, meaning that it's going outside of the boundary of our page. So we can just reduce it like that. And then, you know, this is our image. Now, again, the other cool thing I love about Unbounce that other landing page builders don't have that force you to go into Photoshop, edit it, and then come back is if you click on edit mask, you can actually crop this image right there and then, right? So you can go in and you can just crop it. You can say like this, for example, or like that and boom, you say done and it's cropped in here. You don't have to go into Photoshop. So that's another thing I love about Unbounce. And we can move this down a little bit. Let's suppose, right, we wanna put this image here. We can increase the size of our little test box, test container box. Um, maybe even delete this button actually. I'm gonna click delete and then we're gonna add a new button from here. And then move it here or just click center. And there you go, right? There's our picture. And you already know what a section is. So I'm going to go in and delete that section. It doesn't look good. And there you go, right? So you, you've added an image, you've added the text, everything looks good so far. Now for the button, we can again, drag and drop the button right here. And then you can play around with the button settings as well. So very easy, very simple. You don't have to meddle with the you know width, height, all that stuff. You just do it live right here. And then again, we're gonna center it. And then on the right-hand side is where we're gonna edit this button. So we're gonna say, let's suppose, click here to learn more, for example, and the text is too small. So we're gonna increase it. Let's say 28, a little better. I don't like the font family. So again, we're gonna go in, we're gonna change it to what it was, which is the sans. And that is pretty much it. Um, you could change the style, you can make it italic if you want. Um, then this is the appearance. So this is all the colors. So another cool thing is that you can either have it one base color. So let's suppose we choose solid color, right? So you can have one solid color for the button. Uh, you can have an image for a button. So let's say we take this, it would be an image, which in this case wouldn't really look good. So you would have to really make the image fit with your button. This is a huge image. Wow. Okay. So that doesn't work. So let's go back and change it to at least gradient. And again, it made the button because the image was big, it uh, made the bun just as big, right? So I'm just gonna reduce it back to the same size, but all of this that I'm doing, I'm showing you how you can use it, right? So in case you run into things like that, where an image is too big, you, you know what to do now, right? You just click on these options here and make it smaller. And that's it for that. So for the gradient, these are the colors, right? So you can say, for example, let's say I want a green top, and a red bottom, and then that's what it's gonna look like. And then you can change it up if you want. So to turn it around, right? Or you can change this color here, make it blue, for example, you get the idea. Okay, so lots of options, you can make a gradient, or if you don't want that, you can just go back to solid color and just select a color that you like that fits in with your style. Um, I don't like this super big blue, maybe dark red. Something like that, okay, so that looks okay. You can maybe expand the button a little bit, center it again, and then if you go over to uh, hover, you can also change the hover effect. So if you want to, for example, when somebody hovers over the button, let's suppose you wanna make it blue, you can do that. And now if somebody hovers over this button, it's gonna turn blue. And once we preview the page, you will see what I mean. And you can also select active. So active is when somebody actually clicks on the button. So when somebody clicks on the button, let's suppose we want it to be to turn red, right? Just as an example, so we see the differences. And that's basically the idea. Now the other thing is you can also adjust the corners of this button. So right there, you can adjust the corners. 
I don't like the border, so I'm going to say none. And that is it. So we can click save. Let's see what we have so far, right? Before we go into these other options here, let's just take a look. So let's click preview. And let's just see what it looks like so far. So here's our page. I'm going to hover, right? It turns blue. And then if I click the button, it's red. See? So I'm holding it, I'm clicking, I'm holding it, and it's red. So that's what we have so far. Looks exactly as the editing page does. Okay, so same exact thing. What you see is what you get. So we're gonna scroll down. And then of course, because it is a button, you can enter your URL here. So in my case, let's say it's HTTPS, www.evonmana.com. And you can open it in the same tab or a new tab. And let's suppose we wanna do a new tab. We're going to hit save. And if we click preview, if we click on this, it's going to open my website, which is currently being completely redesigned. So don't judge it just yet. Uh, it's going to open it in a new tab. Okay. So uh, that's the idea. Let's go over a few of the other options, but I think you should have a general understanding now of how to build the landing page. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So light box button. So a light box button is the same as a button, but what it does is instead it can open a light box for you. And I'll show you what that is. A light box is kind of like a pop-up, uh, but it's useful if you're, for example, a real estate agent and you want to show different pictures in that pop-up window, a light box would come in handy. So it would show a light box and then you will see this little light box tab open right there, right? So if somebody clicks this button, let's say click me to open light box. So if somebody clicks that button, you can edit what they see. So this is what they're going to see, whatever you want people to see. So let's say we want to add an image here. Let's suppose on splash, I don't know, let's suppose building, let's say building, let's say, uh, which building is more like this one looks nice. So I'm going to double click that scale image to fit page. And again, I click on scale image to fit page so that it actually shows the full image without being cut off. And then from here on is where we can actually edit it. So in this case, it is a little big. So what we can do is we can go like this and then we can click on edit mask. And then this is where we can kind of cut off the page a little bit, right? We can either do that or we can just make the light box actually bigger. So, so I'll show you how to do that as well. So we'll click done and that looks it. That looks good, right? Now you can also increase the size of the light box if you want by just dragging it like that. No, and I'm going to click on undo, or you can do the same thing here on the bottom. Drag it like this, and you can go in and click on do. So you have many different options here. So if you want to add more images, like if you want to have a little slideshow, I do have a video for that. I will link it in the description for how to do that. Basically, you will have another button. You can have another button on the right side, another button on the left side that opens another light box. So for example, if you click this over here. So now we can utilize our image thing, right? So we can click on style, we can click on image. And then if you go to unbalanced public images, let's suppose we say arrow, we can choose any arrow. Let's imagine we're doing this arrow. It's going to look something like that. And we want to uh, delete that text. We don't need that. And actually probably make that smaller and we don't need a color. So we can say no color. Right. And so now it's the same color. Um, it's, it's opaque, opaque, opaque. Uh, and it doesn't get any bigger because the arrow itself is pretty small, but if you get a bigger arrow, that's what you would do. And then over here now it says show light box too, right? So you could have, if we drag it here. If you click on this arrow, now uh, there's a drop down. So light box two, now it's going to open this one, right? This image. So just more cool stuff that you can do. So if you drag an image here, let's suppose again, we go in building or whatever it is you're doing. Let's suppose this one, this one looks good, even though it's not a building. But just for illustration, we can come back here, drag it here, drag it a little bit, and then we'll have to cut it off. So we'll click edit mask. And wait until it shows the green, right? When it shows the green, that means it's, it's good. So we can do that. We can, I'm not seeing a green here, or, but that's okay. I'll click done. All right. And so this is Lightbox two. So if we go to Lightbox one. If I, let me just show you everything that we've done so far here, right? So this one is opens the Lightbox. 
We'll click on save again and preview. Let me show you what we've done so far. And you guys can use this depending on the circumstances that you want to use this in, right? So if you click on Lightbox, it's going to show an image. You click here, it's going to show another image, okay? And then there's a little close button. So you, you can definitely find use in this, again, like I said, depending on whatever it is you're doing, but I'm just showing you the tools. The next thing we have here is the form. So the form is where you can actually collect emails. So let's suppose instead of this button here, and maybe let's... Uh, dra dra drag this down a little bit, drag this down, or maybe even, you can even delete that. We can add a form, and now a form will have these options. So let's suppose you want to collect emails, let's suppose you want to collect first names. You can drag this up, you can say uh, field place hold holder text, enter your name here, dot, 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 and then we can make this a required field, so people have to enter that before passing through. And they can say, enter your email here, dot, dot, dot. And this we can also make required and Unbounce is going to validate that it's a legitimate email. Okay, so really cool. You click that, we can expand it. And I don't like how it says first name email at the top. So we, we can just double click that, select that. And we can just click on hide label, hide label. And now that's gonna be gone. Okay, so now it just shows this. And it comes with the button, so we can go in and delete that. The form field does come with the button. We can just make it look like that. Form button, a little bit smaller. And this is gonna be your form. And you can adjust the different options here. You can increase the height, um, increase the spacing between them, decrease the spacing between them. Um, you can make, you know, how many columns do you want? So if you're also collecting maybe address, maybe last name, maybe phone number, you can adjust how many columns you want, right? In this case, just one column is fine. Uh, you have the font size as well. So you can change that. And that's the idea. And then you can just increase it by going like that and dragging it to the middle. And then you can also utilize these geometry numbers here. So if you're a perfectionist like me and you're seeing that this is, you know, what's the size of this? It's the width is 592. So then you can click on the button and make the button, you can type in 592. And that way you don't have to manually fix it. You can just use the numbers at the top to adjust things, right? And so that's gonna be our form. And then if you click on the uh, actual submit fields here, you can select what you want. So you can go to URL, you can open a light box, you can do other things. These are more for tracking. These are more technical, complicated stuff. So we're not gonna get into that in this video. But a light box is basically gonna be like a pop-up. So in this case, if you wanna open a light box in the form of a pop-up, which could say, you know, do this or enter this information to get the guide or whatever you're promoting, you would be able to do that. But for the time being, let's say we just wanna take people to a URL. So we wanna go to HTTPS. Did I do that right? It's HTTPS. Shoot, I forgot how to, how does it go? I think it's, I think it's like this, www, right? Elonmana.com. Just completely forgot. And we could open it in a, yeah, so it would have to be the same window here. You don't have an option. And so that's the idea for that. Uh, then you have an embed video. So if you drag this, you can just add a video. So you would need a code, right, for the embedded video. And then it's just going to show the video. And then you have custom code. So if you want to add certain custom code to the page, it's going to be a, its own element, so you can do that. So that's basically it. I showed you all the major settings for how to create a landing page here. Hopefully um, you are familiar now with everything. It's pretty straightforward. Everything's on the left-hand side, right-hand side, everything that you need. You do have contents here. So that is a table of contents, so you can quickly navigate. You can also change the name of sections. So let's suppose if you hover over this section, it's gonna highlight what that is. So if you double click it, you could name it, you know, top section, for example, click enter. And then if you scroll down and you select this section, it's again gonna highlight it, but let's suppose you scroll down to this one, right? So these are testimonials. So instead of saying body two, I'm gonna double click this. I'm gonna say testimonials. And now it's just that much easier to navigate, right? Between all the different sections. If you have, for example, a huge landing page, you can just easily navigate and say, okay, what am I looking for? Testimonials, let me just go here. Or I'm looking for the header, let me just go here. And then it's just gonna take you to that part. The next part here is JavaScript. Don't worry about this. We will get into it once I show you how to add the 
different pop-up or the sticky bar. But if you have any code or let's suppose tracking code from Google ads or Facebook ads or whatever code you need to use and add to a page, you can do that here by clicking on JavaScript and just adding it here, adding it in the head before the body end tag, so on and so forth. You also have style sheets. So if you're familiar with CSS and custom coding, you would enter your code here, okay? So lots of flexibility as well. It's not only a super simple landing page builder if you have no experience, but if you are experienced and you are a professional coder, you can use that to your advantage and add your codes here to the page as well, all right? So we're gonna hit save. We're gonna go back to actually save the page. And so once we go back, we're gonna see something like this. And to actually publish it, we're just gonna click on publish right here. We're gonna hit publish. And then we're gonna go through hyperspace for a few seconds and the page should become available. So if we click on this page, this is our URL, this is the page, congratulations. And if you click here, notice it's not gonna do anything because we have to enter our details. And if you enter a fake email, oh, it looks like it did go through. So either that email exists or it meant something else by verify email. So I'd have to get that checked out, but basically that's the page and it does work properly as you saw. So it takes us to the next page. It forces us to enter our details here. And again, if we enter, for example, Yvonne without the email is gonna say this field is required. If we open the light box, it's going to open this. And that is the idea. Now, if you scroll down over here, you can add page variations. So let's suppose you wanna do a page split test. You can click on add variant. You can choose which exact variation you wanna duplicate, or maybe if you wanna start completely from scratch or you wanna start with a different template, but we wanna create a variation from this existing variation. So we're gonna click on create variant, and then we're gonna be able to make changes to that page, right? So this is that copy. We're gonna click on edit here. And let's suppose instead of this headline, we wanna test a different headline. We wanna say, learn how to make money with affiliate marketing, right? So let's suppose we're doing testing, right? And we wanna test that out. We're gonna hit save. And right now it says variant B. So we can go in and alternate between the variants. So we can go back, we can hit publish as well, but just wanna show you something here. So if you want to split test these, and by the way, if you wanna change the name, you just click on the little pencil icon and you say, you know, headline variation two, for example. Uh, you can either select smart traffic and I was going to test these two offers and see which one has higher conversions, or you can just click on AB test and now it's gonna test them as well. And once we scroll down, you actually do have to say add to test, otherwise it's just considered inactive and then we're gonna republish the test or republish the pages. And now these are gonna be testing against each other, right? Same thing with smart traffic. If you, however, select standard, um, it's just going to select one page to send traffic to. So we're gonna select this first variant, but now you know how to do all that, right? You, you know how to do the split testing. So this is how you create a page. If we go back into our YouTube pages, what you could also do is assign groups for your pages. So let's suppose for this one, you want to assign a tutorial group. You can click on these three buttons. You can say add or remove from groups and you can either create a new group and give it a name or you can select an existing group. As you can see here, I have a lot of groups and you can just select which groups you want to assign your pages to. So this becomes useful again, if you're, for example, an agency and you have many different niches or many different customers and you want to differentiate between all those different categories, you can do so by assigning to different groups. So really cool, convenient stuff. So next thing we have here are the pop-ups. So if we go into pop-ups and sticky bars, we can create a pop-up and sticky bar and then add it to our page. So I'm not actually going to create another pop-up because you basically already know how to do one uh, via the light box. However, let me just quickly show you how you would go about creating a pop-up, very simple. So you would just, select this pop-up option here, select which template you like, go in and edit it, and then add the code to the page. And I'm gonna show you how to add the code to the page once we do the sticky bars, okay? But it's gonna be the exact same thing. So again, select which pop-up you like, this looks good, and then you're just gonna add it to the page, all right? So we're gonna go with sticky bars because it's more practical, but the idea is 100% the same, so just follow along with me here. So you would select a sticky bar. A sticky bar is a bar that shows up at the top, so it could be a good advertisement, for example, you know, or if you want to drive, if, if, 
if you have a special offer and you want to drive traffic to it, for example, 25% off on your first order, you can do that here, right? So that looks kind of cool. So all these look good. All these look good, really. You would just have to figure out what looks good. So let's suppose this one, we can say um, location, sticky bar, UB, tutorial. Again, unbounce tutorial, just so we don't confuse the different sticky bars. We're going to say select, and then you can edit it. So let's first edit this, make it look nice, and then I'll show you how to actually add it to the page. So the first option here you see is you can stick it to the top of the page or the bottom. So you can do that. You would use the exact same elements I showed you in the landing page section to just drag and drop here. So if you want to add more text, you just go in and add text here. And you can, again, change the color, change the font, change the size, et cetera, et cetera. And then for the button here, this is the button, you can make them go to a different page. So for example, let's suppose, let's say HTTP www.evonmana.com slash old dash courses. So for this bar, on the contrary, we can just say, you know, check out my training courses. And then here we can change this text at the top and we can say, see the training available now, right? Or whatever you want to put. And then that's it for the sticky bar. So you can go in and make the changes. This is, I believe this is a background image. So you can go in, yeah, this is an image. So if you click on pattern or click on, let's say solid color, uh, you can just add an image here instead. So if you drag your own image, you can just go in and let's suppose we're using this one, right? You can, and for this one, we're gonna edit the mask. We're gonna, a little bit smaller. And there you go, right? So let's suppose this is what we want our sticky bar to look like, even though I like what it looked like before. But we're going to hit save. We're not going to hit preview because we'll just look at the landing page instead. So we're going to go back into overview. And now we have some options here before we actually add this. So the first one here is the domain. So we do have to actually add the domain of the page that we're adding this to. So in our case, I think it's like unbounce.com. So um, I think it's unboundspages.com. That's the domain of the default domain before I show you how to actually set up your own custom domain. And then you can do it on all URLs or you can choose specific URLs where you want the sticky bar to show up. You have all these settings. When do you want this sticky bar to show up? When a visitor arrives on the page or when a visitor tries to exit the page, so on and so forth. You can do it once per visitor, one on every visit, or maybe if you don't want to overwhelm your customers, you can only show on visit three, for example. So every third time somebody visits you, you can show the sticky bar, right? Or show once every, let's say three visits. So you don't keep showing the same thing over and over again, right? I know your audience. So play around with these settings, lots of options. You can do what you want. Now this is the code that we're going to add to our page. So we're going to go in and copy it and we're going to go back to our pages. We're going to select our page here. We're going to click on edit once again. And now this is where we're going to use the code. We're going to click on JavaScript, paste it here, say head, and then say, this is going to be our sticky bar. We're going to click done. We're going to hit save. We will republish and let's see if it shows up. I hope it does just because I'm, I'm not sure if I set the URL right on bouncepages.com. Should be right. Let's, let's test it out. This is before you add your own custom domain, right? So now if we go to this page, sticky bar is not there yet. So let's go back and just take a look and see what we did. Okay. So sorry about that. I, we forgot to publish. So we have to publish this first. So it is installed. We're just confirming that it is installed. And there you go. Again, I missed an N over here. We said you bounce pages. So that could definitely be a big issue. <laughs> Um, so we're going to publish it once again, unboundspages.com. Okay. So we're going to publish this. Now we can refresh the page, take a look. And there you go. I refresh the page again and now it shows up, right? And if you click on the button there, it's going to take you to my courses page, which also everything is being redesigned here. So, but that's the idea. So just make sure you spell this correctly. Make sure you publish the page and you will see the sticky bar here. And if you created the pop-up, it's going to be the exact same thing, guys, right? Exactly the same thing. You're going to select, like, let's suppose here I have a pop-up. 
You can go in and edit it. You can select when you want the pop-up to show up. You're going to take the code and you're gonna add it to your page. And then if you click on this little edit button here, you can just go in and edit it, right? So this was my one of my pop-ups for learn how to speak Spanish, a specific offer. And then this is the form confirmation. So when somebody submits that pop-up, it's just gonna say, you know, your form has been submitted. So that looks good. And that's the idea, yeah. So again, you can make the pop-up bigger, you know, you can make it smaller, you can make it lengthier, stuff like that. So we're gonna go back, we're not gonna save. And so again, you would do the same thing with a pop-up as you would with the sticky bars. Now for this next uh, option here, integration. So if you are, for example, collecting email leads, you can integrate your page with one of these platforms. So for example, Aweber, Campaign Monitor, uh, they have MailChimp, I do believe as well. Yeah, MailChimp is here. If you're using GetResponse like me, you wouldn't see the GetResponse option. So then you would have to use Zapier. So that's right down here. So you can either select one of these integrations here and then select the page that you want to edit or if you just go into pages, if you select your page, so this is the same thing as going on integrations, all right? If you click on integrations here, you would select how you wanna integrate. So if you're using MailChimp, if you're using Aweber, now for me, I have GetResponse, so we had to go to Zapier. And then you would create a free Zapier account, you would just follow some steps and set it up with, in this case, let's type in GetResponse, okay? So pretty simple, and then you would start collecting emails into your GetResponse account. And that's basically how you would do it. I do have a video where I show you how to integrate it with GetResponse using Zapier. So if that's what you're using, take a look. Or if you're using something else that's not listed here that you need Zapier for, take a look at that video as well. Maybe it can give you some ideas for how to use Zapier because the process is pretty straightforward, it's pretty linear. So once you do that, we are gonna head over into domains. And so for domains, if you wanna add your own custom domain rather than having this nasty looking domain, right, unboundspages.com, which everybody has who uses Unbounce, what you would do is just click on add a domain and you would add the name of your domain. So let's say www.evonmana.com, for example. Let's suppose I wanna use evonmana.com or let's suppose not www, let's say I wanna use, you know, for example, tracking.evonmana.com or in this case, let's say ub.evonmana.com. Whatever you wanna do, it doesn't have to be www you would enter it here. So I have a test domain here, www.moneyonlines-now.com, right? So what you would do, let me show you the process. So what I did was I entered www, and then over here I said moneyonlinenow.com. I clicked create domain. Oh, and it says it's already used. Okay, so let's do a little difference. Let's say moneyonlinetomorrow.com. Then we'll say create domain. And then what you have to do is follow these instructions here. So I'm gonna quickly log in into my Namecheap account and I'm just gonna show you the process for adding these into your account. All right, and so here I am in my Namecheap account. I have been using these guys for five years. I have not switched. They have been amazing. Support has been amazing. Their domains are probably the cheapest on the market. Uh, if you guys wanna try them out as well, if you don't have uh, a domain registrar that you are comfortable with, uh, definitely check them out at go.evonmana.com slash Namecheap. I do have special coupons and discounts for you as well if you use my affiliate link. So take a look. Haven't been disappointed with them, knock on wood, for the past five years that I've been doing this. So uh, this is the domain, right? The sample domain. I'm going to click on manage and let me just show you the process for adding this and setting this up. So you're going to go into advanced DNS settings. And then over here, you're going to enter your CNAME record. So don't worry about this. This is for Facebook verification. Um, just ignore this, okay? Just disregard it completely, this second one. You're paying attention to this top one, right? And so what I did was Unbounce gives you instructions. They're telling you log into your domain provider, okay? And then add a CNAME record for www because that's what you said as your subdomain, right? It was www. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be www, so you can make it whatever you want to. So if I click on add new record and I select CNAME here, instead of typing www, I can say whatever. I can say Yvonne, for example. And then that way the website will be yvonne.moneyonlinetomo.com, right? But in this case, it's the make money online now. So we're just doing this as an, as an example because I don't have make money online Tomo, right? I'm just showing you the process here. 
So what you would do then with your own domain is you would copy this to clipboard. You would come in here, choose whatever subdomain you want. So let's say www, and then you would simply paste it here, paste that link that they gave you here, this one, you would paste it there and then you would say, got it. And then you would say close and that is it right? Your domain should show up here. It's going to say configuring. Now this is obviously fake. I don't have this domain and it's not going to work, but once it does, it's going to say working and secure. Okay. And then once it says that, so I'm just going to delete this cause I don't have that. Um, so you would just click on next, right? So even if you're not using Namecheap, by the way, if you're using GoDaddy, you're using Bluehost, just look for the DNS options. Look for where you can enter a CNAME record or just ask support. Say, hey, support, where can I enter a CNAME record? And just go in and just add it. And for the host, you would enter whatever your subdomain is, like www. And then for the value, you would enter whatever they give you. And so once you do that, you might have to give it a few minutes for unbounce to set up your custom domain. But once you're done, you can go back into your pages. So let's click on the page that we've selected here. And then you would change URL. So you would click on change URL and then you would select from the drop down the domain that you added. So I'm gonna do that here right now. So there you go. I selected the domain. I'm gonna click change URL. And now this is also secure, right? So the unbalanced one, it's not secure because everybody uses it. But if you use the custom, your own custom domain, it's gonna be secure. So. If we click on this URL now, boom, right? Moneyonlinenow.com. It is secure and it looks much better. It looks way better than unbalancedpages.com that everybody's using. So I'm going to go in and sign out of that. That should give you the idea for how to do that. And that is the process for setting up your own custom domain. Everything else here is pretty straightforward. All the settings here, you know, you can invite users. So you can, so you can invite your own like customers, if you're an agency, or you can invite people to actually help you build out pages. So to help you build out pages, you would select author. If you're doing it for your clients, if you're an agency, you just want them to see the stats, see the pages, but not actually edit anything. You would select the second option here and you would enter their email here. So pretty straightforward. Uh, one more thing I didn't mention is mobile optimization. So let's go back into pages here. And I do also have a video on mobile optimization. So I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I just want to just give you a quick glance, a quick look. So if you go into here, if you click on mobile here, so it's already mobile optimized. Okay. So let's just quickly preview this page. Let me show you what it's going to look like without any changes. So if you click on mobile, this is what it's going to look like. So uh, that doesn't look too mobile to me. It doesn't even look that good to me. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to come back here and edit it. And let me show you a quick, neat little trick. So if you select mobile here, don't worry about that. We can skip that. If you select, um, just select any section and just select all sections, it's going to automatically make everything fit in this space that you have, right? So let's suppose this one is too big. So what we can do is we can just remove it or I mean, make it smaller. Uh, this, the text here looks a little big. So we're going to adjust the font here. So do not adjust the size here for mobile, adjust the size here for mobile. Then we're going to make it fit like that. And so you're just going to play around with it. By the way, this section here, we really don't need it. If you want, you can add your own logo to it and maybe your own number or a call to action. But, you know, I kind of just completely forgot about it. We don't need this part here. So you can do that. Um, this one does look a little bit too big, though, for the mobile. So you can reduce the height here. The button, we're going to re reduce the size of the button. And don't worry, this isn't going to change anything on the actual desktop side. So if we go back into desktop, the size here is the same as you can see, it's still 48, but on mobile, it's, it's a little smaller. Right? And actually the text size as well, we should change because the text size is quite, quite big here on mobile. Let's see, where's the, where's the text size? Why am I not seeing it here? Font size. So we're just gonna remove it. Okay. No. So over here, the font size is 14. On mobile, it looks like it doesn't go less than 10. Let's see if we can type in six manually. No, okay. So it looks like 10 is the lowest it goes. That's fine for the time being. It's better to be seen than not seen, right? And so this was our container, our box. We can make it smaller here. We can drag this up. We can center it. We can move this up. And there you go, right? So now we've mobile optimized it. Now this looks good. This is what it's going to look like on mobile. So it looks really good. We can scroll down. Everything else seems to be in shape just because this was a template. So it was already optimized. 
But that's the idea. So really simple to do, really simple to mobile optimize, and that should be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It really shows you everything you need to know about Unbalanced. Hopefully you don't have any more questions. If you enjoyed this tutorial, definitely take a look at my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Mana, where I have tons of other tutorials like this, not only on Unbounds, but a variety of topics. So if you like the way I teach, if you like Unbounds, if you like this online marketing space, take a look at these videos. Again, so much free content, guys. Just all of this is free. It's almost 500 videos all free. If you also are serious about getting into affiliate marketing, take a look at my website, which is being redesigned right now. It's going to be a pleasure to look at quite soon at evonmana.com. And I give you a free 55 page affiliate marketing guide. In addition to offering you training courses at evonmana.com slash old courses. So take a look guys, a lot of tools available at your disposal. And hopefully you found value in this tutorial. I will see you in the next video.